You've likely heard the term bottleneck when referring to PC hardware, especially about gaming, and you might have even considered what parts are a bottleneck for your system. But what is a bottleneck? Well, to keep it simple, it's when one part of your system is limiting the performance of the other parts in your system. Let me give you an example, but first I'm interested this video sponsor, Curve. I've been using Curve for a little while now, and I'm finding it really useful. Having all of my cards in one, including my Tesco Club card, is incredibly convenient. Having 1% cash back on my purchases is a welcome bonus. And having the go back in time feature, being able to swap from my business to my personal card, or even from debit to credit or vice versa, is incredibly useful and handy. You can sign up to Curve today at the link in the description below, check out their free blue card, and get five pounds free when you make your first purchase through Curve. So what we've got here is a Ryzen 3400G, a quad-core CPU from actually a couple of years ago now using the Zen Plus architecture. So it's essentially a second generation Ryzen chip. And I'm playing Watch Dogs Legion because one, it has a built-in benchmark that I can use to show you a graph in a second, but two, because uh, it's nice and easy and is a pretty good example of what I want to show. Now the thing is, the graphics card that I've paired with this is a 3080. This is not a configuration that you would, uh, you would generally use, generally go with. And there's probably a good reason for that, because on average, this system will get just 55 FPS on ultra settings at just 1080p, again, with a 3080. It's definitely not the uh, the smoothest experience. It's not, you know, a horrible jittery mess, but the, the frame times are not fantastic here. Um, and I, I don't think, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, a cab just mounted another cab. Nice. Um, I don't think that you would you would enjoy this playing experience too much. But the thing is, I know an RTX 3080 can do better than this. In fact, I know that it can do a lot better than this. So I'm going to swap out uh, this CPU and this motherboard for a Ryzen 5900X, which is a much newer Zen 3 based CPU uh, from literally just last year, and uh, offers 12 cores instead of just four. Right, so now we are in and playing with the 5900X and it's so much smoother. Like it's it's insane. And if you want to hear the FPS difference, well, we went from 55 average to 97. That's almost 100% more FPS by upgrading our CPU, which is really impressive. Now, this was deliberately a pretty extreme example, going with a relatively old and definitely slower quad-core CPU and upgrading to a pretty much brand new 12-core and with one of the highest-end graphics cards you can buy. So it's deliberately, you know, on the limits. But I also want to show you one other version of, of on the limits. With the same 5900X, uh, also by the way running at 2800MHz RAM for compatibility so that I'm uh, with the 3400G testing apples apples, but I also want to throw in this. It's an RX 474 gig, and this is a, a, a pretty low-end GPU, to, to say the least, uh, and see how that compares to upgrading, or I suppose downgrading from our 3080. So we're now playing on the RX 474 gig, and I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but let me give you my, my qualitative uh, guide to how this feels. Awful. <laughs> um, it's running at just 24 FPS average, which, while very cinematic, 
is absolutely dreadful to play and I would not want to play at this this setting. Now it is an Austria setting so if you did have an RX 470 uh, you could drop those settings and it would be a lot more playable for sure. But yeah this isn't a fantastic experience. Now I will show you the graph uh, of the, the performance difference here but the long story short is that this setup with the faster CPU but the slower graphics card we're getting uh, half of our original reference setup with the 3400G and the 3080 and compared to the, this new CPU, the faster CPU and the faster graphics card, the 3080, we're getting just a quarter of that performance. And the reason for that is it's all a balancing act. Pairing a really high-end CPU with a really low-end graphics card, or I suppose vice versa, is generally going to be a bad time. Like I said, it's all about balance, and so striking a balance between a moderate GPU and a moderate CPU is kind of where you want to be, but it can be hard to find that balancing point and find out, well, what is a moderate CPU and a moderate GPU? What pairings work well together? Well, let's do another little experiment, and I think that might clear it up a bit. So we're back in Watch Dogs Legion, but this time with a much more reasonable and well-rounded, well-balanced system. This is an i5-10400F and an RTX 2060. So pretty much mid-range of, of everything. It's decent, but it's not amazing. Uh, it's running Watch Dogs Legion. As you can possibly see, a little bit laggy on ultra settings. It runs at 41 FPS average, which, well, not terrible. You would want to turn the settings down a little bit if you were playing this for real. Now, this will be our baseline. And what I want to do here is see which upgrade gives you more performance from a, a standard gaming perspective, from a, a more standard system like this. First, I wanna upgrade the CPU. We're gonna run this i5-11600K, which is not a massive upgrade, but it is reasonable enough. We're getting a good amount of IPC, or single-threaded performance improvement, which should help in games, also much better clock speeds, and so let's see how that compares. So we've now got the 11600K installed, which while still a six core CPU, is a good amount faster, just in not only in clock speeds, but also in IPC or instruction per clock improvements. But strangely, our performance in game isn't actually any better. In fact, technically, at least on average, it's two FPS worse. How does that work? Well, the thing is the 11400F is plenty fast enough to keep up with the, the performance that the 2060 can provide. If you were to max it out with something like a 3080, then yeah, we might start to see a bit more of a difference, especially at 1080p, but in practice, and in, in this mid-range, fairly balanced setup, the CPU isn't working as, as absolutely hard as it can, so it's it's not the bottleneck here. So if the CPU isn't the bottleneck here, what happens if instead of spending our money to upgrade the CPU, we were to upgrade the GPU instead? Well, let's have a look at that. Let's swap back to the 10400F and check out a slightly higher end graphics card. Right, so we're now back on our 10400F, but more importantly, we have this 2070 Super in here. This is a pretty reasonable upgrade, either for someone who was looking to build a system and was considering either something like a 2060, maybe 2060 Super, or spending a little bit more on their GPU and a little bit less on their CPU and buying a 2070 Super instead. So it's, it's not a massive upgrade. But the thing is, in terms of performance, we're not far off doubling our gameplay here. 
This is running at pretty much 30 FPS faster than both our original 10400F and the 2060 and with the faster 11600K and the 2060 as well. So in this use case, the graphics card makes a massive difference to gameplay performance and something that you would very much notice. Now I've switched over to CSGO for a very good reason here. And that's because there's a really big caveat to what I'm, I'm talking about here, which is that it, it depends on what games you're playing. CSGO is very regularly used as a CPU benchmark and for a very good reason. At 1080p, even on high settings, well, the RX 470 with the 5900X actually offered more performance and by a good amount than an RTX 3080 with the slower CPU. Yeah. Kind of weird, uh, and it is uh, likely partially due to, as Hardware Box pointed out, the uh, driver overhead problem that Nvidia has on slower CPUs. But the fact that upgrading your CPU can give that much more performance uh, over upgrading your GPU is something to, to consider for sure. But that's the crux of it. How you balance your CPU and GPU mostly depends on two factors your budget and your use case. If you just play games, then generally speaking, across the board, spending a little bit more on your graphics card than you do on your CPU is generally the, the better way to go about it. It's generally a good idea to spend a little bit more on your graphics card, maybe go a tier up and a tier down on your CPU rather than the other way around. Of course, if you're still running a single or dual core CPU from like 10 years ago, then yeah, it's probably due to be upgraded, but any modern CPU for the last like five years, as long as it's sort of mid to high end, you're not gonna see too much of a, a benefit going for a faster CPU over a you know, faster graphics card. But if you also do some streaming or content creation as well as gaming, then the CPU becomes a little bit more important. And so you wanna spend a little bit more, maybe go one tier up on the CPU. And if that means you have to come a tier down on the graphics card, it might end up being worth it. Of course, it will vary depending on how much you stream versus how much you game or content creates. Uh, but for example, with the, the setup that we had earlier with the uh, Intel chips, the 11400F and the 11600, the 10400F and the 11600K, uh, in, in that scenario, if you do stream or consecrate more often than you game or you know game on its own, then spending a little bit more on the 11400F and keeping with the 2060 might be a better shout for you. And finally, if you just do consecration or CPU heavy work, on your system then well by the nature of cpu heavy it's probably a good idea to spend a lot more on your cpu than you do on your graphics card of course it will vary but a lot of sort of productivity use cases while they do have graphic card acceleration namely cuda acceleration for the most part it's still not necessarily quite as important as having a strong cpu and so generally speaking having a good processor, but a slower graphics card is fine. Now, like I mentioned with CSGO, there are definitely some caveats to the, that generalization. Something like CSGO tends to be a little bit more CPU heavy, and as Hardware Unbox pointed out, Nvidia graphics cards have a pretty big driver overhead on slower CPUs, and so it can be worth it to spend a little bit more on your CPU if those are the specific games you're looking to play. But on the whole, as a, as a rough generalization, Pairing a relatively mid-range CPU with a mid-range graphics card, say uh, i5 or a Ryzen 5 with a sort of 60, 70 series card from Nvidia, then you're probably gonna be just fine. There are also a couple of other components in your system that might be causing bottlenecks and that you might want to consider. The two that I'm mostly thinking of are your RAM and your storage with the former mostly relating to your CPU's performance. The faster RAM you have, the better your CPU will be able to perform, the quicker it can access its data and do its calculations. And so if you have a relatively slow set of memory, well, technically you can be bottlenecking your CPU's performance with that slower RAM. It is pretty important to note though that it's not always the, the biggest of performance differences. 
And if you're only a, a few hundred megahertz off of the, the recommended spec for your processor, which for Ryzen is 3600 megahertz, and for the new Intel chips is 3200 megahertz, at least that's the maximum that you can have before you void your warranty, or the older chips is uh, actually for the 11400F or the 1400F, it's just 2666. Not great, but either way, that, uh, that if you're only at a few hundred megahertz off of that, sort of recommended spec, then it's not going to be the biggest performance difference. It's certainly not worth upgrading if you already have a system with memory. If you're planning on buying new, generally the price difference between something like 3200 megahertz and 3600 megahertz isn't all that big, and so it is worth going for that faster kit when you're building new, but the performance difference certainly isn't worth replacing your existing RAM for. And when it comes to storage, that's very rarely an immediate performance, like FPS in games bottleneck, but it can be a bottleneck in terms of your game loading times. As long as you're not using pretty much any hard drive, although one of the slower 5400 RPM hard drives are definitely going to be worse for that, then you should be having a, a pretty good time. Most SATA and Gen 3 SSDs are plenty fast enough for the majority of games right now and while things like direct storage are, are slowly becoming a, a thing especially thanks to the new consoles ad adopting a, a very similar technology essentially uh, for the time being anything from a basically standard SATA hard drive up to a fancy gen 4 plus drive is going to be just fine if you learn nothing else from this video the takeaway that i would hope you understand is that your system will always have a bottleneck there will always be something that you could upgrade to get more performance. For example, even if you had the, the highest end of a system, so a, a 5950X and an RTX 3090, right? The, the best of the best right now. Well, if you swap in an RTX 4090 when that comes out, well, odds are you're going to get a fair bit more performance out of that st same system, the same RAM, same CPU, same motherboard, storage, all that sort of stuff. So technically, the 3090 was bottlenecking your performance. And the same goes for, especially for more creative workloads. If you swap in a, a 6950X instead, when that comes out, well, there's a good chance that that's gonna be faster. And so you're gonna get more performance out of your RAM and out of your storage and out of your graphics card for acceleration purposes, and even potentially while gaming in certain scenarios as well. The point is to balance your system to get as close to 100% performance out of all of the parts in your system, where possible, obviously, within your budget. Pairing, like I said, a really low-end GPU with a, a fancy new CPU will only make sense if all you care about is CPU performance. Generally speaking, buying something like a mid-range i5 or Ryzen 5 and a mid-range graphics card is plenty fine. And even buying higher-end graphics cards from a generation or two ago is also likely to be fine as well. And so a rough guide is if you're buying one of those i5, say a 9400 or a Ryzen 1600 or 2600, pairing any level of 60 or 70 series graphics card from NVIDIA, like a 2060 or a 1070, uh, is going to be a, a decent pair and a, a decent match. And even stretching up to the new 30 series, a 3060 and a 2600 is still gonna be a, a reasonable experience, especially if you're playing at more than 1080p. And even if you are playing at 1080p, well, you will get a good upgrade, uh, a good performance uplift from going from say a 2600 to a 5600X, for example, you're not gonna see worlds difference in most titles. So I hope this video has been interesting and informative for you, and uh, hopefully you now understand bottlenecks even just a little bit better. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, and myself and the awesome community that watches these videos will do our best to get back to you. Uh, there, are, there are links to at least the in-stock components that I've been talking about in this video. They'll be in the description down below if you want to check them out. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can and does vary. There's also a whole load of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs that I actually designed myself. Um, or there's other stuff like Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and of course you support me directly as well. 
And yeah, it's kind of it really. Feel free to check out some more videos on the end cards, maybe the 11600K review uh, comparing to the 5600X. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, like I said, leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you on the next video.